welcome to the stage someone I'm very excited to have on. We've been trying to book her for ages and we finally booked her. It's Lucy Rogers! Kasploom! <laughs> your spacecraft has just exploded. Miraculously, you're still intact, but floating about in the vacuum of space. What happens next? Does your blood boil? Do you freeze to death? Or do you puff up like a balloon and explode? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, contrary to popular science fiction, none of the above happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Liquids boil at a lower temperature when there's a reduced pressure. And you don't get much lower pressure than the vacuum of space. However, your blood isn't in direct contact with the vacuum. Your skin is protecting you. So no, your blood won't boil. However, on your tongue, you will feel your saliva beginning to bubble. So, will you freeze to death? Space is cold. Space is very cold. No, you won't freeze to death. There is no air in space, and so there's no wind to whip, and your, whip your temperature, your heat away. So although you're still radiating, there's no air to conduct your heat away. So you won't freeze. Will you puff up like a balloon? Yes, the internal pressure is much <coughs> higher than the vacuum of space. But your skin and your connective tissue is actually still going to hold you together. So you haven't died of these three things. You're hanging around in space. <laughs> what is going to happen? <laughs> <coughs> well, first of all, all the air get sucked out of your lungs. The vacuum of space will pull it out. And no matter how hard you squeeze your lips together, you're not going to stop it coming out. No air in your lungs means that when your blood circulates round, it doesn't get the oxygen replenished. No oxygen in your blood. When it gets up to your brain, no oxygen in your brain, about 15 seconds later, and you're going to black out. If you're not rescued pretty quick, you're going to suffocate. But hey, that's the worst case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to an astronaut when they're inside the tin can of a spacecraft? They've got normal pressure, normal temperature, and plenty of air to breathe. Well, first of all, they're floating. And this means their muscles don't have to work as hard. They're not moving them around all the time when you can just <laughs> break off and <some> float. <laughs> <laughs> and your heart, as we saw earlier, doesn't have to be used to pump the blood against gravity up to your hand. And so your heart begins to waste away. Your muscles atrophy, all your muscles begin to waste. Your skeleton is used to hold your body up. When you're weightless, there's not such a requirement. And so your bones get thinner. And as the calcium is absorbed into your blood, it's actually starting to cause problems for some astronauts with kidney stones. There's another thing that many astronauts feel in the first few days of being in space. And it, I've actually felt it myself. Not, unfortunately, that I've been up in space, but I have been on a zero-gravity flight. Zero-G flight, they take a normal aeroplane, they take most of the seats out, and then they pad all the inside, <laughs> like a padded cell. <laughs> they then take, the, they then ask the pilots to take the plane in a parabola. And so it will come up and down, up and down, 
up and down. As it's going up, it's pulling about 2G, your thrust rate back, and it's really hard to move your arms. Many fairground rides will pull about 2G. But as you get to the top, it's just like going over a humpback bridge, and your body becomes weightless. And for that 30 seconds over the top, you are floating. You come back down, go through 1G, what we've got here, come back up, another 2G. So, my first parabola, up to the top, woohoo, I'm floating, this is great, it's just like a dream. Second parabola, I'm walking on the ceiling, this is wonderful. By the third, <laughs> and the fourth parabolas, I'm beginning to understand why they call it the vomit. <laughs> By the fifth and the sixth, I'm back in my seat doing fluid dynamics experiments. <laughs> <laughs> I have my sit bag. I am producing my own fluids. And throwing up in 1G, we've all been there. Throwing up in 2G <laughs> is actually really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out so fast that when it hits the bottom of the bag, you've got to really be holding onto it. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing up in zero G. There's nothing to pull it out. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> with surface tension <laughs> and you have to try and squeeze the rest out <laughs> astronauts apparently get over this space sickness in the first couple of days but it's why they don't actually schedule any spacewalks for the first two days of any astronaut being in space when an astronaut comes back down to Earth, they have to reacclimatize. They have to build their muscles up again, including their heart. They have to have a diet rich in calcium to make sure that their bones are strong. But the thing that astronauts find most disconcerting is when maybe they've got a, a mug of coffee and then they turn to do something else. <laughs> 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 You're a bit surprised <laughs> when it's no longer <laughs> just floating <laughs> and has made a mess <laughs> on the floor. <coughs> Astronauts' families are warned about this. <laughs> They're told when the astronaut comes home, do not give them the baby. <laughs> 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 <laughs>